Okay, so I think we can start. All right. Okay, so welcome to this uh, new class, uh, web applications. Okay, in English uh, that is uh, addressed to um, our uh, course of study in uh, cybersecurity. Right. Okay, I'm Enrico Mazala. The first name on the slide. I will do most of the lectures in the classroom and um, uh, some of the labs, okay? And my colleague Antonio Servetti will do a few lectures in the classroom and mostly will help in, in the lab, okay? So we are basically uh, these two teachers in, in this course and uh, we will have in the lab uh, some students helping us for, for the uh, lab activities, okay? Um, I already sent you a message on Telegram. I hope you all are on Telegram. If not, go to the uh, uh, didattica.polito.it web portal where you can find a link to subscribe to the Telegram channel. Okay? I'm saying all of these things because we are recording the lecture. We, we record all the lectures. Okay, hopefully <laughs> everything will work and I will make them available as soon as the class finishes. Just a technical time to, you know, upload to YouTube and the uh, uh, web portal. Um, okay, so I think we can start with the introduction. You already have these slides available, publicly available actually, not just for you, but for all the world. They are on GitHub with no uh, password restrictions or anything. Okay, as you should know from my, mess my email message and from, the, um, uh, from what I wrote on the web portal. So this is the goal of the, of the course, understanding web architectures and uh, trying to master how to design a web application. Of course, we will not have time to do everything, so our application will be let's say quite basic in a certain sense, but we will try to touch uh, all the aspects which are important, uh, uh, at least from the client side point of view. Of course, we will have to develop something on the server side, which is by the way, particularly important, uh, especially in this course, uh, which is inserted, as I said, in the uh, course of study in uh, cybersecurity. But in, of course, during the course, we will point out all security aspects, and all things that are important from the security point of view while we are uh, discussing uh, topics and so on. Uh, you may know that uh, in uh, um, web application, JavaScript is the natural language in which uh, applications are programmed. So we will start uh, just uh, today uh, uh, after this introduction by discussing some basic aspects of the JavaScript language and we will gain knowledge of this language uh, uh, basically in this week, good knowledge of this language. Um, okay, so if you have questions and uh, comments or remarks, uh, just uh, uh, raise your hand and uh, I will listen to you. Uh, in any case, we will have time for, for questions at the end of each uh, uh, lecture. Um, so this is just a, a more detailed view of what I just said, uh, what we are going to learn. We learn JavaScript as a language, uh, not just the language. I mean, we are not just interested in syntax uh, uh, constructions and so on. Of course, we, we need to know that, but that's really easy. And you are in, in the Master of Science course of study. So, I mean, it's easy for you to learn a new language. You already know some programming language. So we will focus on peculiar aspects of JavaScript, like uh, asynchronous programming, which is really fundamental to understanding JavaScript and so on. We will focus on browser, what, what the browser environment uh, uh, makes available for us uh, for programming uh, applications. And um, so this is, will be, in a certain sense, a, a short part, because then we will uh, focus on single page applications and we will build them not from scratch, so not directly interacting with the browser uh, ecosystem, but uh, uh, with the framework, okay? And the framework uh, that we chose in this course uh, is React, okay? It's very popular. Um, 
very much used uh, around the world for, to develop uh, web applications. So we believe uh, it's a good choice, a good compromise also from, you know, between uh, the difficulty in, in um, learning it and what we, we can do with, with it in, uh, in a few weeks, basically. Okay. It's not the only one, but um, I mean, we think it's a good compromise. And also, it's true that this is the first year this classroom is, uh, um, uh, how to say, um, is, de is developed and uh, um, is given to you. But we are not starting from scratch because we already uh, developed this course four years ago in the Master of Science of uh, Computer Engineering. So this is, uh, let's say, derived from those classrooms, uh, but uh, uh, it's a bit extended uh, uh, with respect to those classrooms uh, because we have two more uh, credits. Okay, so we will have uh, these credits especially to focus uh, on security aspects in web applications. That's the idea. Uh, and so we, we saw that uh, this approach works worked very well and um, I think it's uh, reasonable to keep it. Okay, so this is more or less the calendar. This is just a, a, an overview, okay? So of course we'll focus on JavaScript in the first two weeks, uh, more or less. Then we'll introduce a server side because uh, um, we, we need something to speak with uh, for our web applications and then we will start to introduce all the client part that needs a server side to talk with. Okay, but we will go into more details in these things uh, as they uh, develop during the course. Okay. Um, this is how the course is organized. So today is Monday. We typically have lectures. Okay, so the uh, red ones here, or R4, that's this room. But sometimes we will use this room for laboratories, uh, depending on the um, occasions. Uh, I, we will make available a much more detailed calendar uh, later, okay, as, as uh, weeks uh, progresses. On Tuesday we will have laboratories, except tomorrow. Tomorrow we will have lectures in room 10i, okay. We will have three hours lectures, like today. That's because it makes n not that much sense to have a lab after just three hours of uh, teaching and, you know, how, uh, one hour is just a course organization and so on. So there's basically nothing really interesting to do in a lab in the first week. So we'll use it for lecture. We'll go, uh, you know, we'll progress in, in, in the discussion of uh, the topics of the course, in particular JavaScript. So the, the week after, we will start the laboratories and uh, you will uh, uh, be able to um, uh, do something interesting in the lab. And then we have Thursday, room 16. Uh, we will use mainly for classes, not all weeks. This week we will use it again for the same reason as before, because we need to have something to do for the labs. Uh, the difference uh, between these rooms, uh, so the R4 and 10i and the 16, is that at 16, unfortunately, it doesn't have uh, the electric plugs uh, for each uh, desk, okay? So there are a few electric plugs around the room, but not really one for each desk, okay? So we'll try to use it uh, not that much, if possible, because uh, I see that uh, many of you have uh, laptops or tablets and so on, and having the plug is more convenient, okay? So sometimes Thursday will be free. Uh, we have two lab groups, uh, I think, yes, uh, divided by last name, okay? I took a look at the roster of the class, and uh, it seems that dividing uh, around the letter L, L first group, M second group, for the last name, it, it's more or less uh, uh, an equal size for the two groups. These groups are not so strict. I mean, if you have your friend that has a last name in the first group and you, want stay, you would like to stay with him or and so on, and vice versa, you're free to do that. We'll try to keep the groups balanced because uh, the space in the room is limited. I mean, the, the room is not that uh, small, but you know, when you need to go around and help uh, uh, ask for um, explanations and so on, you know, then there should be some free desks. We cannot pack the room uh, because it's a lab, okay? 
Um, so coming back, uh, um, okay, classes. Classes are uh, in person, as you see. Um, mostly in the rooms with power outlets, uh, as I said, except for room 16. Uh, some of you already brought uh, um, your computer. Uh, it's not mandatory, of course, but uh, you need to try to something. You would like to follow the slides or, and so on, or, or on a digital device, you can do that, okay? Or you can, would like to try something different in the examples and so on. We will video record everything uh, in the classroom, so the lectures. We will not record the labs because nothing to, to record. We don't give uh, lectures, okay? The, you, you are working on your own or you're with your friends and, and there's really nothing to record. Um, it is possible that a few times during the course we give some materials to read or watch, but it is really short. And I mean, since this time, uh, compared to the uh, last um, years, so we have um, more credits. Uh, we'll try to avoid this, but I'm not really sure we can really avoid it uh, every time. Okay, but we show will be uh, some short lectures or things that uh, typically are easy and uh, you should maybe already know and so on. Okay, like uh, uh, for instance, uh, uh, web architecture or HTTP protocol and things like that, okay? That you are supposed to already know. Okay, lab, uh, don't start this week, but they start next week, March uh, uh, 12th, uh, in room 10i. They will be always there, plus, you know, in another room like this, okay? Uh, there are no computers in the room, so you'll need to bring your own computer. Um, uh, if you want, you can work with uh, your friends, so you don't really need to have one computer for each person, but uh, um, I mean, if you would like to do that, uh, you're welcome. Uh, we will publish a, a text online some days before the, the labs. So there will be uh, um, something written to develop during the lab, okay? To follow and to try some of the things that uh, we uh, discussed during the lectures and apply it in practice, apply them in practice. Um, so basically exercises, okay? We will, uh, well, at first the lab will be like an introductory lab, but then we will try to carry on a project that uh, you develop by yourself um, during the weeks, okay? A web application, basically, starting from very basic things and arriving to something that is uh, more or less fully functional, okay? Um, we will post solutions on GitHub, so in, in the course repository, more or less one week after the end of each lab, Okay, so it will give you time to think about the possible solution, what to do, and so on. But then we will not abandon you, so we will uh, um, um, keep you in, in, in touch with the labs, uh, uh, because if you, was, w if you were not able to develop uh, uh, something in the lab for some reason, you didn't have time, you had some problems and so on, you can take our solutions and start from the solutions and carry on with the next labs, okay? So you are not supposed to, to stay behind, let's say, for the labs because mm, any reason, okay? Uh, it's not mandatory to use our solutions to develop the next lab, but it's a help, it's a help that we, we, we give, I mean, uh, like, uh, uh, how did the teacher solve this problem? Is the same as uh, as I did, uh, or is something really different? Uh, uh, what are the advantages of my solution, his solution, and so on? Uh, you can, you know, uh, uh, try to understand these things. And of course, you're welcome to ask all these questions in the lab. Um, so laboratories. Uh, that's what I already told you. Uh, we have two slots. So for this year, we have two slots. It should be enough. Uh, there are 140 students enrolled for this class. Mm, we don't uh, really expect that every uh, student comes to every lab because, you know, for some reasons, uh, there, there might be mm, some uh, 
le less students coming in the lab, but uh, we expected that most of you come. So like uh, 50 people for, for each uh, slot probably comes. Th that's, that always comes from, you know, last year's experience in the other course that I told you. That's more or less what, what happened. Uh, uh, nothing is mandatory, of course, uh, video, uh, lectures are video recorded uh, and uh, labs, uh, you have the text, you have the solutions. I mean, if you work, would like to work from home, of course, uh, you're, f you're free to do that. Uh, there's no additional points because you came to the lab. You can come to the lab uh, if you think it's useful, it's useful for you. Uh, but, you know, for us, uh, it, it doesn't really matter, okay? Uh, for us, the only thing that uh, matters, and maybe for you as well, is, is the exam. We will talk about this in, in, in a minute. Okay, so everything is on GitHub. All the links in the, in the slide should be clickable. So let's um, try. Yes, okay. So uh, this is the website. We keep it on GitHub because it's simpler, okay? Uh, last year we had a part on our personal website and part on GitHub, but I think GitHub only is fine, okay? Um, so the, this everything I, I tell you, like uh, the schedule, um, more detailed than what you find in the slide. The slide is just a, a hint, but here you find the detailed schedule. So today, Monday, uh, 4th of March, March lecture uh, for three hours, okay? Uh, tomorrow, uh, Thursday, lecture again. On the 11th, lecture again, and then we have the lab, okay? We still have to decide if I come to the lab or my colleague Antonio comes to the lab, but, uh, you know. We will, uh, you know, keep this ahead of schedule, okay? So you'll always find the, the slides uh, and the material here, okay? With the links and so on. So introduction to the course, of course, you already find this uh, slides, okay? Everything can be downloaded, uh, no problems, and so on, okay? Um, so, okay, so the SCORES website where you find everything, including the examples that I will do in the classroom. I'll try to push it on GitHub, uh, not really in real time, but when we finish a topic or in the, in the break, uh, I'll try to push it so, so they are already available to you, okay? And video lectures as well. They are uh, both on YouTube for your convenience and uh, on the Portale della Didattica, so the, the, the Polito web portal. Uh, there are just the files, uh, just if you want to download them, uh, it's easier because YouTube do doesn't have, you know, the download button, so... Uh, you can download it in some ways, but it's not so convenient. Okay, we will use Telegram for communication. Um, we have a, a channel, you see that we have uh, topics in it. Uh, um, I'm first year that I'm experimenting with topics, but my colleague did already last year, so uh, think, I think it's uh, useful to keep things um, ordered, and um, especially when we will talk about exams, because uh, for the exams, you will have the possibility to ask questions in the, in, in the, in the channel. And so for each exam, we will create a topic, okay? That's especially for that reason that we created the topic. Anyway, in the news and announcements, announcements typically uh, I will post things. Uh, so they are just, you know, uh, advices, uh, announces, uh, news, and so on. And in the other topic, you are free to ask questions or uh, ask things, and anybody of you can reply as well, okay? Because I'm not always online uh, 24 hours, 24 seven, okay? So if maybe a, a colleague of you has a problem, I cannot uh, install something, uh, this thing is not working and so on, and somebody else has a solution, it's very welcome to, to post it, okay? Uh, bef before uh, I, uh, I answer, <laughs> okay? Um, of course, uh, um, you, you can always send an email to me or ask me during, at the end of the lectures and so on. If things are more pri pri private, I mean, of course, if you have a specific problem that, regards, uh, that, that concerns only you and, and you don't want really to, 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 to let every colleague know about this, uh, just uh, you know, send me an email or a private message on, on, on Telegram is fine, is fine as well, 
Okay. Um, exams, exam. Actually, I hope you only <laughs> come once. Okay. It's a development of a project, individual. So you are supposed to to do it uh, uh, by yourself. Um, and uh, uh, the marking is uh, uh, divided in this way. Okay. Uh, the project uh, will be evaluated with you and up to 26 points out of, uh, let's say, 30, 30 plus uh, louder. Um, and then we will have an oral discussion, uh, which is up to six points. Okay, so basically uh, you can reach, let's say, 32. So there's room for getting the cum laude uh, mark. Okay. Uh, you have uh, more or less three weeks, uh, 20, 21 days, uh, okay, to develop the project. So we will publish a text uh, of uh, what is required in the web application that you need to submit by a certain deadline. That is typically the, the day of the exam decided by the, the Polito, the Politecnico. Um, and then we will meet and we will uh, create a schedule and we will meet uh, for uh, uh, correcting the, the, uh, what you submitted uh, live. I mean, I, I will open your solution on the, on the computer and we will check the functional requirements. So we'll navigate in the project and see if it does uh, what, what is required, like a, a booking site, you can book something and, uh, you know, delete a reservation and whatever. Okay. And, um, uh, of course, uh, the first uh, two exam seats uh, will be probably crowded. <laughs> uh, you are 140, as I, as I told you. So, uh, past experience on this kind of courses told us that uh, more or less in the first seat, uh, maybe 80, 90 of you will come, will submit a project. Okay. Because, of course, you will follow the, the course very well, so you are eager to submit a solution and, you know, pass the exam. And so it means that uh, we cannot evaluate all the project uh, the same day, okay? It takes like 20, 25 minutes, 40, uh, 30 minutes, uh, depending on, you know, the quality of the project, to evaluate a single project. So I will not be alone. My colleague Antonio will help me, but, you know, it will take uh, three, four days uh, for the first uh, exam seat and maybe the second one as well, okay, depending on the numbers. Uh, you're supposed to work uh, alone, so by yourself, without help from friends, especially others submitting the, the solution for that exam. And so we will try to make sure that uh, your solution is not excessively similar to other solutions submitted, okay? This happened uh, very few times in the past, but I mean, this. If you work alone and you don't uh, copy from friends, let's say this should not be a problem. I mean, there's ample room to have uh, personal ways of s solving things uh, in the exam, okay? Uh, the exam is, uh, I don't want to say complex because it's scary, but I mean, it's, uh, let's say, mm, not so simple in the sense that you need to develop a certain number of files of components, React, uh, et cetera. So uh, everybody will have its own idea on how to develop these things. Some, something will be similar, of course. There's, uh, I mean, if you require a page for authentication, there's a username, there's a password. Of course, everybody will have that page because it's normal. Okay, how, how do you want to authenticate a user with, without username and password? Okay, but you know, for other aspects, uh, uh, just, uh, just to mention one, uh, the aspect of the application, how it's presented in the web browser, or the way you organize the components, the files, uh, et cetera, uh, the API on the, back, uh, on the back end, so on the, on the server side and so on, everybody has its own ideas, and, and it's free to implement it, of course. Uh, we have uh, full exams rules in the course website, so in the one that you, just show, uh, just uh, so before. Um, so uh, it's you. You arrive on this page, uh, okay? So this page, uh, exam rules, uh, okay? 
exam rules, they should be already updated uh, and I don't want to say final because maybe there's uh, some, something we, we still need to adjust it, but uh, it should be these ones, okay? Um, so that's more or less what, what I told you. Uh, it's a bit more specific, like, like uh, you know, the final version must be submitted before the deadline, which is typically the day of the exam, etc. But you will have uh, detailed instructions later on uh, towards the end of the course, okay? Uh, there are also recommendations, please read the recommendations, uh, FAQ, so frequently asked questions and so on. FAQs are not yet online, okay, but uh, uh, I, I will show you what, what we did in the, in the last years. So they are already online there. Um, please have, uh, take your time to read all these things carefully. And if you have any doubts, uh, please uh, ask, uh, ask me or my colleague Antonio. Um, so, um, yeah, let's see if we have uh, um, Syramus schedule, what is uh, the old classroom? I don't remember where I put the, uh, no, maybe in the exam. No, resources, no, uh, I, I'll update this page. I, I would like to have you uh, link to the uh, lecture examples, no, uh, a link to the uh, other class. The link is simple, but uh, I, wi I will put it here as well. You, okay. So, this is the link, uh, Polito, WA1, AW1, 2023. And here you'll find all the material for last year course, which is a bit different, okay? In the sense that uh, uh, it doesn't include these two new credits, uh, especially focused on security, okay? But, uh, you see that uh, uh, there are links uh, for, for the English version and the Italian version. Last year I was doing the Italian version. My colleagues were doing the English version. This year they, they split the uh, Italian English and, well, anyway, um, you'll find uh, uh, examples of exams, okay, already given in the past. Okay, that's the, the, the important thing. So. Uh, this is Italian one, but probably if you're not Italian, you're interested in, uh, I lost the link, sorry. And you are interested in the English one, you can take uh, one of them, that's the same, okay? Exams, you have 2022-2023, four exams there. So like, uh, let's take one, airplane seats, okay? I'll make it bigger because for the recordings and for you, okay? So you can have a look at uh, you know, how, how a text for the exam looks like, you know, the requirements for the project or for the exam. You don't need to wait for the end of the course, okay? We will do something similar. Probably we'll try to have the same exact exam as the other courses, but in our course, since we have two more credits for security, there would be an extra requirement uh, for something related to security, okay? Because you have eight credits here and that, uh, those courses are six credits, okay? But you can have a, a, a good idea if you look at those uh, uh, courses, okay? Um, okay. I think I told you more or less everything about the exam. Uh, I mean, the, the exam in practice, how it works. Uh, what is about? It's about uh, developing a web application using React plus JavaScript. That's the client side. Okay. Of course, we will go into more details in the rest of the course. This um, might just be keywords uh, for the moment. 
node plus express on the back end, so on the server side, okay, and SQLite as the database server. You, you are required to stick to these uh, technologies uh, because we need to be able to upload them on our server and test them in a uniform way. So you cannot uh, just say, well, I know Angular or I know, I don't know, whatever else, uh, servers and so on. We know that you know, there could be other ways of doing things, but for this course, you are required to use these technologies, okay? Uh, there will be these functional specifications, uh, uh, like the one I just showed you as an example, to be developed individually, to be submitted using GitHub Classroom. So in, in basically, you need to have a GitHub account for the time you will submit the project for your exam. At the moment, it's not needed, but Maybe most of you already have it. It's fine. Uh, you can use it, that, the one that you already have. Um, no problem, no, con no restrictions on names and so on. Uh, the GitHub Classroom is a, a, a web application, actually, <laughs> developed by, I, I'm not sure if it's GitHub or somebody else that relies on GitHub anyway, that uh, links uh, your GitHub name with the roster that we uploaded we will upload on GitHub Classroom and so on. So uh, basically, it, it's an automated way to submit your project. That, that's all, okay? You don't really need to know Git uh, or do branches, uh, commits, etc., except for one, and then will be detailed instruction on how to submit the project, okay? That's only, the only thing that interests us in this course. And then uh, we will evaluate uh, the, your project, uh, running it uh, on... Uh, on a server that is using Linux and um, examining the code. So there, there are functional requirements, so we'll try the application, we'll click around in the browser and see if it works, and then we'll have a look at the code, okay? Not every single line of the code, because it's, a, of course, a big project, but we will have a look at the critical aspects of the code. In particular, we will focus a lot on security because of the way this uh, course is, is constructed. Okay, so the oral discussion is this idea that, uh, uh, first of all, we need to make sure as much as possible that you develop the project, okay? Uh, I, in the past, uh, I think uh, uh, I never found one that really uh, had the suspect that it didn't or she didn't develop the project. Okay, maybe not by himself or herself, okay, but at least uh, he or she knew what was inside the project, okay? That's a minimum requirement. If you don't really know what's inside your project, of course, you will, fa you will fail the exam uh, because, you know, it's the minimum requirement, you know, to, to pass this, this exam. You, you are developing these things at home or wherever you want, so we are not uh, checking if you are doing these things alone. And so, knowing your project is the minimum, really, minimum requirement. And also, you are supposed to know the project uh, quite well, okay? You, you can, uh, you know, rehearse your project in the days before, you know, when, when you come for, for the discussion and so on. So, uh, we cannot uh, really uh, uh, tolerate uh, behavior like, I don't remember, I did it three weeks ago. Okay, you did it three weeks ago, but, uh, I mean, you have the time to rehearse your project, have a look at your code if you don't remember things and so on. Of course, you are not, a, uh, we do not expect that you know everything by memory, so all the names of all the functions and so on. We'll, we'll find things, uh, but you, you at least should have an, uh, an idea on where to search things, okay? In which components, uh, how did you organize components and so on, okay? Uh, and the evaluation criteria basically will be uh, how much you know your project, uh, especially the design, okay? So um, I'm not really interested in, you know, what, what does this line do, unless it's not working, okay? But, uh, um, you know, that, that, that is uh, expected that everything works. You tested your project before the submission, so it's expected that uh, the code more or less works. There will not be syntax errors or whatever that, that prevents the project from running. But 
we are especially interested in what you thought about how to solve the, the problem that you had you know, for the web application, both on the client side and on the server side. How, how did you address security concerns in the API on the server side or in the client side and so on, okay? So this is the things that will be discussed with you. Not just, you know, what does this line of code do? Yeah, I can do a question like this, but if it's related to something that is not working or that they are not able to explain well and so on. Otherwise, uh, okay, we will make questions about the code, but, uh, you know, on, on, on about the design of your code, okay? Why did you decide to defer this action later or when you interact with the server and so on? Things like this, okay? Not really, uh, you know, uh, what's happening in this line, why, why you use the uh, uh, for and not while, okay, to do a cycle. Th this kind of things are not really interesting for us. Okay, so coming to the last part of this uh, uh, presentation. These are a few resources uh, that you have available around in the internet. Uh, you know, web application, everybody is developing web application nowadays, so you find a lot of documentations around in the internet. The, the point is find reliable and good documentation. So the links that we try to give you uh, are, let's say, checked for, with this uh, purpose in mind. So one uh, really good uh, um, resource is the uh, Mozilla Developer Network. Okay, so let's say you have a doubt about uh, a method, so a function or a class in JavaScript and so on. You, you, you cannot really know everything about the JavaScript standard library or whatever language standard library and so on. So let's say array. I don't know what's the, how does the filter work? I don't really remember if it takes a callback uh, or, if, or whatever parameter before the callback and so on. This is uh, a guide that you can check and it's uh, very mm, well done, uh, okay, with examples, uh, you, can, you can even try and so on. And um, more or less it's what, uh, you know, many programmers use, uh, you know, when they have, uh, questions, doubts, uh, or, or need to find uh, some functions that probably exist, but they don't really know when, where they are. There's something similar for React. This is react.js.org that uh, has been moved uh, in another place recently anyway. Uh, that's the same for React, okay? So use effect, okay? That is one of the most important uh, methods that it's made available in React. Okay, you find uh, uh, a lot of documentation here. Uh, oops. There are books as well. We don't really recommend books. Uh, I mean, if you, are, uh, if you really want to have a book, um, you know, you can look at those, one of those, but uh, you know, th there's so many documentations online and uh, we hope to give you uh, the, the basic concepts and the basic design ideas that you should use in the web applications during the course. And these things are not really easy to explain in a book, okay? So you should try to follow uh, our discussion, our lectures in the course, and especially during the, the labs, they should show you how to apply what we explain during the lectures in practice, and probably you, you don't really need the books, okay? Uh, I'm not saying that books are useless, okay? Maybe for some of you <laughs> are a good way to, 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 to learn things, but you should know it uh, by yourself. Uh, more books, uh, there are also online uh, books uh, or short guides uh, in the form of books uh, online and so on. Uh, again, <laughs> other books. Uh, more resources, uh, well, I, I, I don't want to spend all time uh, clicking on links. Uh, JavaScript, uh, okay, that's the Mozilla Developer Network, but there are also other very good resources like JavaScript.info uh, or, or uh, documentation for developers and so on. Okay, let's come to tools because, you know, to develop efficiently in a programming language, uh, 
you actually need a, a tool or, or a set of tools. You cannot really open a text editor and write code. You, you can, in theory, but you're not so efficient, okay? If you have something that manages files, uh, uh, maybe versions uh, and so on, uh, you can, uh, it, it helps a lot, okay? Before that, we need to have the environment for, for programming, okay? Uh, like uh, when, when you program in C, you need the, the C compiler. When you program in uh, uh, whatever, Python, then you need a Python interpreter. We need something for JavaScript, okay? One thing is easy, it's the browser. Everybody has the browser because every system has a browser, okay? But the other one, the one for running JavaScript on the server side um, is not a browser but it's an environment is this, this thing that we mentioned here on the slide, Node.js. It's an environment, it's, it's a, like a, a JavaScript interpreter, like a Python interpreter for Python and so on, uh, that you can download for free, okay? There will be instructions in the next slides. And uh, we will use it uh, for doing the first experiments with the JavaScript language. Before going into the browser, which is a bit more complicated because uh, you know, the browser does many other things uh, uh, besides interpreting JavaScript, okay? Um, so please um, try to install this uh, Node.js and there will be instruction. Use, always use the LTS version, long-term support. It's actually not that long in the sense that it should last a year, a year and something, but at least it lasts uh, until uh, the course end and until the next uh, edition of the course, okay? So you have a, a stable version, not something that uh, after, uh, let's say, a few months you need to update and so on, okay? Because there are inter other intermediate versions, but I mean, there's uh, plenty of things. Uh, uh, I mean, we're not using all the functionalities of Node uh, of the LTS version, LTS version. so um, just stick to the, this version because if we, are all on the same version that's easier in the case of, in the case of if some bugs arise for some reasons, okay? It's a really unusual <laughs> situation, but uh, in that case, uh, we can search and find a solution that works for everybody. And then we will use React. Uh, we will talk about this uh, later in the, in the course. And there are uh, debug uh, tools uh, for browsers. You don't really need to install them now, but if you want, uh, just extensions. Uh, typically for Chrome and Firefox, I recommend not to use Safari for testing our web applications and so on, uh, because um, you know, the, it's not so easy uh, you know, to deal with these uh, extensions. I'm not sure if, if the extension exists for Safari, maybe yes, but uh, sometimes it has some weird behavior for, for a few things. Uh, that doesn't help us and, you know, it makes you uh, lose time on things which are not significant for, for the course, okay? Uh, we will write code uh, typically in Visual Studio Code, which is a free programming environment not just for JavaScript, it's well uh, suited for JavaScript, suited for JavaScript. Um, um, so basically we are asking you to install this Node.js uh, um, runtime environment. So we can run simple JavaScript program just to start programming JavaScript. And then a tool to write the code, okay? That gives you you know, the normal things that you expect from a programming environment, syntax highlighting, automatic uh, identification, you know, moving the code around, formatting the code, and all these kind of things, okay? These are the detailed instructions. Uh, uh, you can follow them and, you know, before <laughs> installing things. Uh, we recommend to use Linux as possible, okay? to develop uh, all the things for, for the course and for the exam. Uh, these are the instructions, so Node.js typically don't install the, the version that comes from your Linux distribution because it's quite old typically, okay? Even on the latest version of Linux. So you go to this link. Uh, I know this is not the best things for security and this course is, 
it's a bit weird that I tell you, you know, download something and run it as a super user to install things. <laughs> okay, but you can uh, stop here, inspect the code, have a look at the code, okay? But this is a trusted website, I mean, I'm, I, I did it, so. Um, basically, it, it sets up a repository where you have the latest version in your uh, Linux distribution, and then it tells uh, the Linux distribution to develop, to download the, the latest version of Node and install it on your system. Okay. Visual Studio Code again, there's a package in the distribution, but please don't use that one. But download it from the uh, website. Okay, that's a dev or RPM or, or something else package for your distribution. You just install that one if you are on Linux. Okay. If you are on Mac, uh, actually, uh, things are a bit simpler <laughs> uh, because uh, you, you are forced, in any case, to go to, to the websites and download the packages, okay? And those are the latest versions. Always choose the LTS package, okay? I recommend you be careful. Okay, if you're not on Linux, uh, may, make sure that you do all the things uh, uh, well in the sense that Mac OS and Windows that we will discuss in a minute, are not uh, case sensitive for the file system, okay? I know that you, you can write uh, uppercase and lowercase, but uh, when you open the file, they don't uh, check if it's uppercase or lowercase like Linux. And since we will test your project on Linux, it's a good habit to have uh, uppercase and lowercase exactly match the file names, okay? So just be careful of this. And Windows, uh, Windows is a, bit more complicated, but I know that uh, many of you we will develop uh, using uh, Windows. Uh, we recommend not to use Node.js installed in Windows without a Linux subsystem, but nowadays uh, basically all Windows versions support this uh, WSL, Windows subsystem for Linux 2, in the sense that two is better than one and most of the Windows uh, support the two, unless it's really, really old, uh, because it, it's much better integrated with the Windows system. So basically you need to install the Windows subsystem for Linux. You go to the Microsoft website, it's just a, a few th clicks, uh, okay? And then, and then you have a Linux subsystem in your Windows and you work as in Linux. Okay, for Node.js, it's the same installation instructions. For, uh, so, the same command as before. So don't install Node.js in Windows, because it's true that the two systems can talk, but uh, uh, you cannot have packages in Windows uh, and the, de the development system in Linux and vice versa, because it creates a lot of problems with the file names and so on. And uh, that's a main source of problems that we saw in, in past labs in this course, okay? So try to stick to one system only, uh, uh, Linux uh, subsystem Windows. Basically, the uh, WSL is a sort of a hidden virtual machine. So it's like you have a, a virtual machine with Linux within your Windows environment. And, uh, but it's automatically managed by Windows. It starts automatically when you click on that uh, without all the complications of, of uh, an actual virtual machine like with the virtual box or other system like that. With Visual Studio Code, you need to be a bit more careful also with the VSL, WSL uh, system. You need to download the Windows package, install it because it's easier to, to run it in Windows and then it will recognize that you have the VSL and so on. And so we'll ask you a few questions. You say yes, okay? Uh, and it installs uh, the extensions needed to talk with the Linux subsystem. And it does everything automatically. So it's the best thing to do, having the Visual Studio code running natively in Windows, but talking and working on files in the uh, VSL system. Okay, but it does everything automatically if you follow these instructions, okay? Um, so that's, <laughs> check you're not in this situation, okay? So you, you should not see the terminal, the Windows terminal, PS, PowerShell, and so on, but you should 
see a Linux-like terminal when you open the Visual Studio Code. If you are in this condition, everything works, okay? If you have problems in the first lab, we are available to solve all these problems so that you have uh, an environment where you can start working and we have time for that, okay? The, the first lab is very simple and it's uh, to make, uh, um, to allow everybody to, to, to be ready, you know, for the rest of the course. Again, Windows is not case sensitive, it's like Mac OS. So if you mismatch a, a case, so upper or lower case in the name of a file, Windows works, Mac OS works, Linux doesn't work, okay? So be careful because the exam will be tested in Linux. Okay, so this, that's all for this uh, introduction. Um, if you have questions or comments, uh, I'm glad to hear from you. Should be more or less uh, um, complete. I'll, I'll do this uh, um, addition to, um, to, the, to the website. Always refer to the website, okay? If something is missing, just tell me, I will add it. Um, we will have the course material here. So basically the, those are other repositories in the same GitHub organization. It means uh, that you find a link to the slides. We already have the, the next slides for today and for tomorrow, I think, as well. And we will have a place where I will put uh, some of the examples already today. Okay, lecture examples. Oops. I think uh, something broken in the repositories. Probably I misspelled the names. Yeah. I, I will check it offline, okay, not to, uh, to, to make the best use of the time here. Uh, there is always, there is already something. So we will have a folder like week 0, 1, 0, 2, and so on. Uh, same time I will upload, uh, like in this, this time, something before the lectures. You're not really required to, to have a look at this stuff now. Uh, I don't think uh, today we are able to solve these exercises, but tomorrow we will look at these exercises and we will solve them in the room, okay, together. I mean, mostly me, <laughs> but uh, together if you have uh, different ideas and so on, okay. So you'll find everything online here, okay. Um, how to deal with this uh, GitHub website? You, you are not really required to install the Git uh, uh, program, okay? So to interact with the GitHub with only with the Git protocol. This is a basic website, so if you don't, for some reason, you don't really want to have uh, anything to do with the Git, Git you can always, uh, you know, um, download zip file or whatever, okay? It's a simple zip file, you open it in any system. I, guess I, I don't really know it, okay? So you'll find everything that is being uploaded in, uh, in, the, repo, in the repository, okay? Uh, and the others are simple text pages and so on, nothing really special. But it, it's convenient and I believe that since you are uh, following a, a master degree in cybersecurity, maybe you should give a try to Git. Okay, maybe you already know Git, maybe you are seeing it in other courses. I mean, the concepts are always the same, okay? We are not asking you to do anything except for the exam. For the exam, you need to clone the repository, put your files, make a commit and push it to the, to the repository to submit the project, but there will be detailed instructions about this, okay? Uh, otherwise, you can simply download stuff when you need it or have a look uh, at the stuff online, okay? It's a web uh, application, <laughs> indeed. And you can always uh, copy and paste and do whatever you want or see the raw files uh, and download the raw files, including JavaScript code and, and stuff like this, okay? Okay, I think it's all for, for the moment for the introduction. If you don't have questions, 
Um, I will typically have a break in the middle of the three hours, except for the first lecture. I, I would break now, okay, uh, like 10 minutes, uh, even though we are just one hour from the start. Uh, but since afterwards we start, uh, you know, discussing the topics of the course, I will break here and uh, see you in 10 minutes. And in, in the meanwhile, if you have questions, please come to the desk and I will be glad to answer you. Thank you.